morning, YouTube. This is Lucy from Bent Tree Garden. And as you can see, I've got the food forest in full action. This is my fall corn. That's a blue Hubbard squash growing and one growing over the trellis. I've got quite a few squash this year. A lot of paste tomatoes, L crop tomatoes, and um, I think it's a black semen that survived. My black from Tula tomatoes just didn't do well this year. Um, they started to regrow, but they never took off, so they're in there, but they're so small, I'm not hopeful. But as you can see, these tomatoes are trees this year. So that's wonderful. And I also started a new thing. I've got sweet potato plants. There's understory underneath all of my tomato plants this year. Since I did deal with the purple ones last year, I decided to throw in a few more. This is the rest of my beets. I'll be harvesting beets today. Uh, here's another Jersey Wakefield cabbage. It has been so hot in our zone for North Dakota that you would think we were in Texas somewhere. It was really just that hot. So a lot of things that would have finished off and closed up um, have really stalled a little bit. Everything from having such a warm winter is like a month or two behind. I've been picking a lot of beans, and I have some purple beans in there to get to that are just starting. I tried onions this year. I've had some pretty good success with them, so next year I'll try it again. This is cucumbers. I had peas under here that I was enjoying all spring, and I put the cucumbers in because the peas weren't dead, and luckily enough, the cucumbers shaded my peas, and I'm still picking peas in August. So I like that. My Brussels sprouts are doing pretty well. And I tried again. I said I wouldn't do broccoli, but uh, I've got broccoli trees, but they look like they're starting to try to head up. So I'm going to leave them there. And... Here's all the purple cabbage. They look really good. Um, we're just seeing one or two white butterflies, so I think my cabbage, I'll, I'll be able to get it out the ground before they get a chance to try to chomp on anything. This bed here is some kale I put in late because my spring kale just didn't take off. So I put some more kale in, some more cabbages, and lots of carrots in the middle and beets. Here's my grapevine. We had a storm and it knocked the whole vine down so it's half tied up. I've got several groups of grapes on there. Uh, the red seedless ones did pretty good this year. It's like three bunches under there and I'm just waiting for them to ripen. The green one put on one bunch early and then it started bunching up two more bunches mid-season so I'm not sure if they have time to get ripe but it's alive and growing so that that's what I'm happy about I tried some peanuts again this year so we'll see we've had uh, strange bugs this year so I don't know I'm just keeping my fingers crossed with certain things Swiss chard is doing pretty well in every garden um, over here these are my sweet peppers and I have some banana peppers that were supposed to be sweet uh, I took a bite of one and it was extremely hot so I don't know what's going on with the nurseries this year a few things were mislabeled over here tomatillos I tried that for the first time this year and that tree just it it exploded. It's a couple of trees under there, and now I know next year one plant would probably be enough for me. And I want to scoot over here 
that's my little extra compost bin. I have a fig tree. It's not zoned. It's really zoned for zone five. But since I had such success with the zone five peach tree, uh, I'm, I'm giving the fig a try. I'm going to try to cover it, lay it down over the winter with a lot of things and see if we can't get it acclimated to uh, our, our zone here. And these are something else that were late. These are my eggplants. And they struggled because it, the weather, we had such big swings. And then when it did get hot, it was too hot. So I just let them go. And they're, putting, they're fruiting up now. So hopefully I'll get some nice eggplants off of them. These are some more cucumbers. Um, I put some Arminian cucumbers on the right side. And I do believe a couple of the bees might have cross-pollinated some of my regular cucumbers. So I got some interesting sized cucumbers this year. And I have picked one Armenian cucumber. It's more like a gourd. So I wanted to give it a try just because I really love cucumbers. The strawberry patch, I took it apart, separated all the strawberries. I still got to do some in the front here. Uh, that way they'll have room. This is my acorn squash. I got quite a few acorn squashes off of here. Those taste awesome. I love them. That's going to be a winner in the garden. It's my basil. Uh, I planted purple basil like three or four times this year, and they just didn't take off well. I have another sweet potato that I put in my leek bed. It was leeks there, and I harvested all the leeks out, and I put uh, two sweet potato slips in there just to see where they grow the best. Um, so, so far, this is my harvest for today. I'm pretty proud. I did pretty good on the onions. Uh, they're not all super big, but I do have some pretty good sized ones in there. So I have an idea for next year how to work with the onions, growing onions at home. So I'm pretty pleased. And over here, remember that zone 5 peach tree that got sent to me on accident? Outstanding. It's the largest peach tree that I have compared to the peach tree, the contender, that zone for here. So I opened all my fruit trees up and let me see, July I did some pruning and opened the centers up and it just really took off from there. Um, this is our raspberries. Here on this trellis you can see the Hubbard squash. I've got uh, more melons in here. I was trying to trellis all of the watermelon and prune it when I saw melons and the first two melons I lost. So I'm not too sure if I'll get a watermelon out of any of these. Some of them are small melons. So we'll see. We'll see what I get when it's time. But they're very happy. Sweet potatoes are growing down and the melons are growing across. So it's an experiment to see who's happy living together. More sweet potatoes there. And let me see if I can get you a glimpse of one of these Hubbard squashes. Uh, I don't know how big they're supposed to get, but it's down there. So this thing looks wild and big, but it's definitely taken over the backyard. So I'll share some of that with my neighbors and my friends that I volunteer with, you know, get everybody introduced to different tastes and different things. So I like to share, share my extra. Uh, what else will I say? Um, uh, down there would be the herb bed. I've already cut back all of the dill and harvested the seeds and um 
the dill itself. And that's another volunteer sunflower. I want to discuss the sunflowers this year. I don't know if everyone is having this issue or what. I don't know what they've been spraying. But if you look at the sunflowers, it's the petals. The petals are not right. Um, and I have sunflowers in the front with little cantaloupes. And the tops are like burnt in and there's no petals it's just the head they look very deformed um i'm happy to see the bees now in the garden pollinating the cucumbers and just enjoying themselves because they came in late also um they weren't here in the spring uh, once the melons and the cucumbers started to come alive and put on flowers i was very concerned because i saw no bees at all and then i would say in the last maybe two two weeks i would say the bees have just come into the garden and i feel much happier now i started getting the cucumbers and i i just don't know what what made them come so late this year but I did notice that. And I do notice the deformed sunflowers. They're closest to the sun. They're very tall. They self-seeded themselves this year. Just like most of the tomatoes here self-seeded themselves. The L crops self-seeded themselves this year. Um, I don't know. Maybe somebody out there has ideas of what's going on. But these are my extra long um, green beans. So they've just really started once the temperatures were steady above 100 degrees to really climb. So I'm happy about that too. Just wanted to update you and give you a little glimpse into the garden and let you see one of my harvests and just chat and check in about things. Okay, thank you so much and I appreciate you, all of my, my listeners and my subscribers. Thank you very much from Lucy and Zone 4, Bentry Gardens. Good morning, YouTube. This is Lucy from Bentry Gardens. Giving you an update. It is the 30th and September 29th, I believe, we'll have our first light frost here in Zone 4. And this is my herbs. I have a cauliflower, and that's a volunteer tomato tucked in there. I believe they're early girls. They come up everywhere this year. It's our little fig tree experiment. We have two of those. So we're going to try to cover them up and keep them warm and insulated over a hard winter and see if it can't survive. Wish us luck. <laughs> and over here is that Alberta peach tree. Let's take a good look at that one. It is a zone 5 peach tree and it exploded this year. So I'm hoping to get some peaches off of that next year. Pretty happy. My raspberries are still giving me raspberries. This is my second set of corn. Starting to tassel, so hopefully we'll get some more sweet corn to pack away. I have all kind of barriers up because we do get windy this time of year. I tried rope the barriers and the wind still blows the corn down so if you got any ideas please put it in the comments I'm all for it but I'll walk around here and let you see everything is still bustling I've got sweet potatoes there still going uh, squash I got some zucchini down here and that's acorn squash tucked in there with it 
I keep trying to grow okra everywhere. That's two. It re they really didn't take off, so the leaves look nice, but I won't get any okra from that this year. This is my cucumber madness. It'll continue to grow until the frost kills it. So that's every year. These are some hot peppers. They're loaded. Yeah, if you can see those peppers under there. Um, some purple cayenne peppers under here. Some ancho peppers. They're getting really big. Eggplants still hanging on. In this bed here, I cut back my nasturtiums. They went wild. I don't know, they go wild for me every year. And I have some holy basil, some peanuts experiment stuck in there. So we'll see if I get any peanuts. Squirrels have been being nice to me, so I don't see any digging. Some Swiss chard tucked on the sides. These are my sweet peppers over here. My bell peppers have been slow this year, so hopefully I get a good amount of bell peppers. We've had excessive heat here in North Dakota. We usually don't get a lot of hot days, and this year we got a lot of extremely hot days. Uh, I did have three bunches of grapes this year. I took one in the house, and my darling son ate them all. They were, I did get to taste them. They were delicious. So I'm pretty proud of these grapes. We built this trellis to hold them up. So they have a nice home. Let's see. We come around this side. These are my uh, tomatillos, purple tomatillos. They're beginning to ripen. They're loaded with all kind of tomatillos. And I cut it back, I trimmed it, and it just seemed to grow more. Uh, still have a few eggplants over here going. And it's the back side of those cucumbers. More peppers here. You can see it's a little, little packed in, but I pack it in every year. And I usually get a lot of bell peppers. So this year they're going slow. It was just too many hot days here. Too many days the real feel was 100 degrees or more. These are my beans. The, this okra plants here are doing pretty good. I've gotten one okra off of it already. It's blooming. It's producing. So uh, I may get a little snack out of it. Here is my fall bed, you could say. It's collards, kale and some red mustard because i like the red leaves on the mustards i have a couple of swiss chard tucked in and i have carrots popping up through the middle i don't know if you can really see some of the carrots they're starting to come up down there and here is my broccoli fiasco you know i plant broccoli every year they get tall. Uh, it's even putting out new sprouts in the, the the joints of it, you know. No broccoli head. No broccoli heads on any of them. I figured this year I'd just leave it in until, I don't know, until it dies off. And maybe I'll eventually get a broccoli head because it does have leaves in the middle. So maybe it just takes a long time to get the broccoli. I don't know. But I'm trying. These are my purple cabbages down here. They're small because it was very hot. Very, very hot. They got a little damage, but they're beautiful. We'll cut them up and eat them. Some more cucumbers. I plan to make some little jerkins with those. Because I know they'll keep growing and I'll just take the little cucumbers off. And do pickles and jerkins and keep going from there here's uh jersey wakefield cabbage this is like the third one uh i had this year there's a little cauliflower tucked over there 
Uh, it was so hot that it really didn't, you know, it's kind of stunted, but it's growing out now. You can see the head. So, self-blanching cauliflower. I still have a few beets sizing up. This was my second beet bed. So, every day I check it and take a few beets out. And they've been holding on since spring. I have another collard tucked in over there. I don't expect to have to um, buy those for the holidays. This is my tomato bed. Uh, most of them are indeterminate tomatoes. Some paste tomatoes. Most of these tomatoes were self-volunteers. Especially the L crop tomato. Uh, I came up on its own. And there was a black from Tula tomato that came up on its own also. So they're still uh, making tomatoes. I don't know how many I'm going to get by the end of uh, September, but we'll see. Usually once the shoulders get really light, I start taking them off and boxing them up so they can ripen inside. Okay, over here. Here's another zucchini. That is a uh, pumpkin back there. Yeah, my garden is really a jungle. Uh, some more volunteer early girl tomatoes tucked in there, ripening up. And this big thing here is a blue Hubbard squash. I clipped the growth ends of it, trying to get it to slow down. Nothing slowing that thing down. I cut cut the growth ends. It puts another growth somewhere else. So the cold will kill that off too. Um, and I have one trellis up here across this little trellis that I have. And it kind of caved it in because it's so heavy. But there's another, there's a Hubbard squash there. Uh, there's with late cucumbers. It was an experiment to see if I could put some in late and get them up, but I don't think they'll make it. I've got peppers tucked in here with, in this container over here, I have a trellised watermelon. You can see it coming up the trellis with the Hubbard squash. Uh, there is a melon in that little sack right there, got hanging. I don't know if it'll... It has time to make it to the 5 to 8 pound. It's supposed to be a small melon. But it's, it was so hot this year. A lot of things really slowed down to just survival rate instead of production. But down in here are my sweet potatoes. More sweet potatoes. I have some Malabar spinach trellising up. This poor trellis, I'm going to have to reinforce it next year because it pretty much caved in. Under here is some uh, crookneck squash. Let's see if I can uh, find some in here. It's a lot of flowers. I took a few off of here earlier. I don't know. Uh, there's one in there. So we'll see how many I could possibly get. Okay, over here are... More green beans. These are the red noodle bean. I wish when you cooked them that uh, they stayed red. That would be pretty cute, but I like to have a lot of green beans. Green beans are my family's favorite vegetables, so I try to plant all the types of green beans I possibly can. This here is... Uh, some serranos, I believe. There is some, yeah, serrano peppers and a couple of bell peppers. I've had a few bell peppers off of there in the pot. And, you know, everything is still bustling. You would never know that my first frost date is the end of September because my garden is still a jungle. Well, I just wanted to give you an update, YouTube. Let you know what's going on. I'm still out here harvesting every day. Thanks for watching. And thank you for our new subscribers. This is Lucy from Bent Tree Gardens.
Okay, I'm going to give you an update on my side garden. I have cantaloupes here uh, tucked in with some sweet potatoes. I took two very nice cantaloupes off. Um, over here, I have these, believe it or not, they look like pumpkins. I have several, even one in the back. Um, they're super sweet, and they grow here in Zone 4. And they're actually cantaloupes. They're called LeBlanc. This one here is ready to go. It's completely lost its color. It's overripe. I've got to take that off. Uh, they deadhead my roses. I have another cantaloupe here that's ripening up. As you see, that'll be a nice one. And as you see, my nasturtiums went buck wild. In fact, that's elderberries. Full of elderberries. We got to get them before the birds get them all. Then here is another um, miniature cantaloupe. It's almost ready. They get from one, four to eight pounds. <laughs> That's a big variation. They're sweet also. They're called Dior. That's another French cantaloupe. Here are my sunflowers. Which finally, um, after all the heat, they're finally blooming. Um, let's see. My apricot tree is doing okay. This is the new one I'm putting this year. Pretty healthy. I don't expect fruit from that. But this is our contender peach tree. If you remember, I showed that Alberta in the back. So when I trim it in the fall stiffen up these branches maybe i'll get some peaches out of peach one or two peaches out this bad boy next year i'm hoping and this is my uh other apricot it does look like something uh was chewing on this one uh i lost a branch well i'm gonna tighten these back up uh next year at the end of the year not next year the end of the year excuse me and see if I get at least one or two apricots. I'm not sure. Because it seems like something that's always, either the wind, something that's always attacking the tree. I tried to hem it up here, but I think this branch has got to go. So I'll fix that later. And see if we can get that to heal. I'm always trying new ways to hem up my trees. Because it's very windy here in Zone 4. Okay, I just wanted to give you a little small update. And you can see on this side, some more of those melons. Those are blocks down in that bowl. It'll be ready soon because it's pretty huge. And again, they're super sweet. Uh, I watered them pretty well and fertilized them. But I did slack off, so I didn't give it the full attention one would think you have to. And they grew just fine. I have another Dior on the back side here. And another little one there. Again, the pretty nasturtiums. At the end, it's another Dior, I think it is, from the shape of it. I'm not too sure if I expect that to ripen up. It may. It depends on the rain. We didn't get a lot of rain this year, so things didn't ripen up same way they did last year and some more elderberries um over here we have some gooseberry plants some lemon balm cowboy toilet paper i love that the whole name um some more lemon balm and we love the chocolate mint so we got it on the side of the house where we can cut it dry it, dehydrate it and I use it in my cooking all through the winter. Okay, YouTube. That's just a little update on the side fruit trees and what's going on over there. So you know about a little cantaloupe extravaganza that worked out this year. Okay, speak to you next time. This is Lucy from Bentry Gardens.